food fascination. It's what we're serving up in this week's show as we look at Southwest Florida as a taster's paradise. Our centerpiece story is sizzling hot. The spring edition of Southwest Florida Restaurant Week is taking place now. It gets bigger and bigger each year thanks to these two foodie friends. The restaurants have to be the best restaurants in the area. The price point has to make sense, their prestige in the area, and their presence in the food scene. So those are the three P's we go by when inviting and choosing restaurants before Restaurant Week. Then from SS Hooker to Summerlin Jake's, new owners hope third time's a charm. Lee County restaurant owners are betting that you'll love their shack. Plus, hours before you start your day, donut makers are up and at them. Working the dough, we were there for some midnight magic. We'll have those stories along with the latest in our Positively Healthy Medical series. I'm Amy Osher and this is Behind the Headlines. I'm Amy Osher, thanks for joining us. Our cup runneth over when it comes to accolades. For years now, Southwest Florida has been recognized for quality living. Ranking high for healthiest, happiest communities, best place to retire, top beaches, top growth, and more. But recently, this area started climbing the ranks of foodie destinations. And it's due in part to these two dudes. Now, what space do you feel you occupy? Are you more promoter, more restaurant lover? How would you describe? You know, we like to put ourselves in that restaurant marketing, food event standpoint. But you personally, are you a foodie? Yeah, absolutely. I grew up, I, I grew up in Queens, New York. My mom's Filipino, my, my dad's Puerto Rican. I've been around a lot of culture, a lot of great food my whole life. With a shared passion for eating out, Rafael Feliciano and business partner Guy Clark founded Sizzle Southwest Florida Restaurant Week giving businesses a chance to showcase their foods and locals a chance to dine at a discount. We get pork belly tacos. Hi guys, tacos. welcome. Hey, Public house. how are you? How are you doing? doing nice fantastic, to you. nice to see you too. It took a lot of rubber on the road to put Restaurant Week on the map. The first event in 2015 featured 26 restaurants. Fast forward three years and it's ballooned to 71. The guys are picky when it comes to eateries. Well, there is a criteria for restaurant week because the restaurants have to be the best restaurants in the area. The price point has to make sense, their prestige in the area, and their presence in the food scene. So those are the three P's we go by when inviting and choosing restaurants before restaurant week. They each have a role to play. Raphael is a front man at home in the dining room and the kitchen. Listen, you know, restaurant week, you guys have an awesome menu. What are, what are some of the things you guys are cooking up? What do you got? Well, right now I'm going to do actually the uh, salmon that it's on dinner, uh, the dinner menu. More of a detail guy, Guy knew they'd make a perfect pairing. So we got to kind of know each other via food, and he had come to me and he told me this great idea about restaurant week, and I looked him dead in the eye and I had said, if you ever need help with that, you let me know, I will quit my job and I will come on board right away. Together, they're lighting up the restaurant scene. The Public House of Naples wanted a taste of the action. Well, this was our first year and I felt that we really missed out not being a part of it last year on our first year of being opening as um, some of my other friends that are restaurant managers, they said their business increased 40% during restaurant week versus the year before. I'm gonna give you a chance to humble brag. <laughs> We've noticed that Southwest Florida is climbing up the ranks as a foodie destination and for a lot of its food venues. Do you think that you all have anything to do with that, with the exposure you're giving to restaurants? I think we all have a piece to do with that. Everybody who's dined at Restaurant Week, everybody who's posted on Facebook, made a review, a positive review, has had a piece of that. But it would be really cool if we kind of had a bigger piece of it. So this is a pan-seared salmon, lemongrass, crusted cilantro, veggies, okay. Food tastings are a big part of what they do. What we do is we ask the restaurants to prepare their menus for us ahead of time. That way we can take photos, we can do <laughs> Facebook Live videos, and we can let people see exactly what they're gonna eat during restaurant week. The pair used to dine together, now they often divide and conquer. Raphael and I are like yin and yang. We are complete opposites in our business ways, our thinking. He's younger, I'm older, etc. And same with the foods. He likes certain foods that I don't. They're crazy busy leading up to restaurant week with so many hot spots on the menu. We had this unique statistic that that guy put together last restaurant week in which based on the population, how many people live here in Southwest Florida, how many people can actually 
dine out, not including kids. Last restaurant week, when we did 31,000 covers over 49 restaurants, we were only touching 2% of the population here in Southwest Florida. So our ceiling is pretty high. We moved here in 2012 to open what is now Trattoria Abruzzo. On any given day, Rafael and Guy might sample a handful of restaurants. So we've been here six years, straight from Abruzzo, Italy, and uh, all, our, all our food is made fresh and homemade. All the pasta is made from scratch every day. Plate after plate piled high, it's a feast for the eyes as well as the stomach. Now I make that, but mm. it does not look like that. <laughs> oh, no. look at that. Oh, here, I'll help you cut it there. No, Mr. that's so Warner. soft that, trust me. No, 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 but you need to cut it because you know, portion control. Yeah, okay. Portion control. Each restaurant has its own niche, making for a melting pot of flavors, and the list grows longer all the time. In this shopping plaza, nine of the businesses are food related. Yeah. What we're starting to see in Southwest Florida, they're starting to turn a little bit. Start, the, the cusp is coming, the curve is coming, and food is starting to become very important in the area. You know, you look at tourism, restaurants and resorts are one of the number one reasons people come here to Southwest Florida. So highlighting the restaurants and showcasing the good food, I mean, that's all part of the process. Part of their process includes giving back. One dollar of each sizzle week meal goes towards a scholarship at FGCU, benefiting a student in the hospitality field. It's the final course for this dining duo. Honestly, at the end of the day, I think Rafael and I really just want to make a positive impact on our food scene and try and do some good for the community and eat some good food. Everyone wants to try out that hot new restaurant, and there's plenty to choose from around here. But one local hotspot has rebranded several times, and now it's new again. The location's the same, but the decor is decidedly different. The stilt restaurant overlooking Punta Rossa near the Sanibel Bridge now has a thatched tiki style roof to go with its transformation into a beat shack. Forget SS Hooker and Summerlin Jakes, the restaurant's now called the Bimini Beat Shack. It just opened and our news press team went in for a look. Bimini Beat Shack is a very unique concept. It's, it's very casual, kind of like walking into Key West, uh, similar to Sloppy Joe's or one of the other entertainment venues down there, where you just walk in and sit down. It's very casual, very relaxed. We have a wonderful menu, actually quite surprising that the menu is as good as it is in a concept that's basically a tiki bar menu. Uh, we've got a, 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 an extensive uh, menu of handcrafted island cocktails. We do feature Fat Tuesday frozen daiquiris, and of course, uh, all the beer and wine that you can drink. Original inception was back in August of last year, but of course Hurricane Irma did change the timing for that. We were originally shooting for December of last year, but uh, of course uh, workers got a lot of business and they weren't as available as we would have thought they could have been. So we did push that opening into the new year and once we realized that it would have been right in the middle of season, we did push it out another couple of months decorated very well. As you can see, there's uh, fish mounts everywhere. There's a lot of uh, pirate memorabilia. Uh, and there's some unusual things that you wouldn't expect. Uh, in the ladies' room, it looks like you're under the water and you're under a dock. You see some legs hanging down from there. Uh, there's also, uh, like I said, pirates hanging around the building. There's a couple of swings at the bar. Uh, we do have an airboat hanging above the stage which goes up and down almost like a, a curtain would on a regular stage and uh, the propeller on the back of the airboat spins, there's uh, fog coming out of the back of the airboat so every time you turn and look there's something unusual. The raw bar has a wall of oyster shells behind it, the uh, bar top itself is an aquarium that's got live bait the Bimini Bait Shack. We do plan on expanding our operation a little bit in the future. We have a tremendous area under the building that is undercover, so we'd like to run some events down there, sponsor some fishing tournaments, concerts, some festivals, perhaps some, uh, some retail fairs. Uh, 
Mardi Gras weekend. You never know what we're going to come up with once we dial everything in. Seems like dining isn't quite enough to satisfy our appetites. People around here enjoy talking about food, snapping pictures of food, reading about food. It's one of our most clicked on topics of both the daily news and the news press, which is why our food writer is so busy. Here's what Shelby Reynolds has been chewing on. The dining team here eats out a lot, whether it's for a dining review by our food critic Jean LeBeouf, or just for a bite to eat in between assignments. So each month we compile a list of the best things we tasted, from a slice of key lime pie on a stick to citrus cured uni. We'll start with JLB's favorites from May. The chicken wings from Lowbrow Pizza and Beer are smoked long and slow and tossed in dehydrated buffalo sauce, which serves as a delicious smoky dry rub. They're also served with ranch blue cheese fusion dip. JLB also selected the kanji from Sunshine Cafe in Bonita Springs. This is like Asia's take on cream of wheat. The rice-based porridge is topped with fresh ginger, minced pork, and a poached egg. Sales Restaurant in downtown Naples earned a top rating from JLB, including the citrus-cured uni. Uni is the sex organ of the sea urchin, and at sales, it's served with radish and a squeeze of fresh passion fruit. In the no-call, Miss Tim Aiton also shared two of his top meals from May, including a pulled pork sandwich with all the fixings from Jones's barbecue food truck. He also enjoyed the macaroni and cheese and baked beans sweetened with cinnamon and brown sugar. Finally, Tim selected a slice of key lime pie on a stick from Angelic Desserts and Bakery Cafe. The handheld slice of pie can also be prepared gluten-free. For more food news in Southwest Florida, visit NaplesNews.com. When we come back, it's nice that once in a while, nice guys come out on top. A local gourmet pizzeria handles a heckler in the best possible way. That story is still ahead. Life here is amazing, and so is the joint care. At the Total Joint Center at Physicians Regional Healthcare System, we've changed the experience of joint replacement for good. With our comprehensive joint care program, most hip and knee replacement patients return home in just two days because we know you want to get on with your active life. Pain-free living starts at Physicians Regional Medical Center Collier Boulevard and Physicians Regional Medical Center Pine Ridge. Hiring the right moving company is important. Best Moving and Storage is a family-owned and operated business serving Southwest Florida for over 22 years. From our free in-home estimate until the last piece of furniture is in your new place or stored in our climate-controlled warehouse, we treat you like family. Best Moving and Storage is fully licensed and insured with all of our employees being certified drivers and packers. When it comes to protecting your treasured belongings, choose a company that's experienced and trustworthy. Call Best Moving and Storage today at 239-592-6565. My name is Steve Unser and cabinetry is my specialty. I have been creating custom designed cabinetry for 20 years in Southwest Florida. And now I am celebrating the grand opening of our new Naples showroom. Steve Unser Cabinetry will help you design your kitchen, bath, or home office with stunning results. Offering the best quality of cabinets with a wide variety of design options and pricing to fit any budget. If your kitchen isn't becoming to you, you should be coming to us. Now two locations to serve you. Cardiovascular disease is our nation's top killer, and a key component is high cholesterol. It's estimated that 71 million Americans suffer from it, and only one in three have it under control. Here's what you need to know in this week's Positively Healthy. You may not feel ill effects from cholesterol, but it doesn't mean you're in the clear. Depending on your ratio of good to bad cholesterol, if the ratio is over four and a half for a female or over five for a male, then you're at risk. Um, and the higher it goes, the higher the risk for heart attack or stroke. The body doesn't require much cholesterol to function normally, and excess amounts may be deposited on the walls of arteries, decreasing blood flow. If a piece breaks off, it can be catastrophic. Board certified in family medicine, Dr. Elias Shaheen stresses the importance of getting a read on your risk. So if it's the first time you're being diagnosed with high cholesterol, we can't actually do genetic testing to see what, why is the reason you have high cholesterol. Is it genetic? Is it lifestyle? And actually they can test certain medications and see which is the best medication for you. Statins are commonly used, but doctors have an assortment of drugs at their disposal. 
Well, certain ones, um, they impact the actual transport of cholesterol, and the others actually decrease the cholesterol content in the blood, and some just have you pass cholesterol in the stool. While medication is often warranted, healthy living is always a positive approach. Especially now that we're trying to push more lifestyle changes, people are getting healthier with less medication. In the five years since Nice Guys Pizza opened, it's developed quite a fan following. The Cape Coral Pizza Bar is a hip place to sit back and chill with friends. But last week, someone went online and posted a very unfriendly review. Just four words, one of them a gay slur. But it was how the restaurant's owners turned their frowns upside down that caught the attention of the news press. Our news press food writer turned the story, speaking to owners Greg Gebhardt and his wife Giovanna Batkovic. They were shocked to read the review, which started with a homophobic three-word letter followed by the phrase, and Democrat locals. Instead of getting into a war of words, the pair decided to have the review printed onto t-shirts and sold. 100% of the proceeds is going to Pride Southwest Florida, which is devoted to creating a positive image of the LGBT community. Nice Guys prides itself on being an all-exclusive pizza bar where everyone is welcome, with the exception of maybe one person. Okay, time to browse the newsroom for the latest scoops and tips from our reporters on the beat. Thanks, Amy. I'm Harriet Heithouse, arts and entertainment writer for the Naples Daily News and NaplesNews.com. Culture lovers probably know Artist Naples as a museum, as a concert hall, as an education center. Now you'll know it as a construction zone. In the next few weeks, there are a lot of changes coming from the building to even the orchestra. Read about it in today's Naples Daily News and NaplesNews.com. Hi, I'm Ashley Collins. I'm a features reporter with the Naples Daily News. This past week, I saw The Bachelorette on Monday night, and Trent Jesperson, a Naples real estate agent I wrote about, is no longer on The Bachelorette. He did not receive a rose from Becca Cuffrin uh, Monday night. Uh, he told me that he was disappointed and did not expect it because he felt there was chemistry with The Bachelorette, but he is single, ladies, so he's not uh, giving up on love just yet. For more on this story, visit NaplesNews.com. Hey, uh, Dave Osborne, Regional Features Editor. I uh, just wanted to tell you that I interviewed recently Kevin Moore, also known as Keb Moe. Uh, he's an American uh, Delta Blues uh, musician. He also plays mixes and pop music um, with, his, with his songs. He will be in uh, Benita Springs on Tuesday night. Uh, check out my story on Keb Moe at NaplesNews.com. We'll see you soon. Hi, my name is Brittany Carloni, and I'm a reporter for The Banner and the Naples Daily News. This week, I wrote about a prom held at American House Coconut Point, a senior living community in Estero. Residents of American House were treated to an hour of complimentary dance lessons and later enjoyed an evening of food, music, and dancing. Read more about the senior prom in last Wednesday's edition of The Banner and online at naplesnews.com. Columnist Brent Batten's been on a roll lately. He's back with his weekly commentary. Brent. Thanks, Amy. So, it looks like IHOP is changing its name to IHOB. Setting aside for the moment the fact that this sounds like the worst marketing idea since New Coke, still one must ask, what's a hob? Webster's Dictionary defines a hob as either a tool used for cutting gears or as trouble. Neither one sounds very appetizing. IHOP originally stood for International House of Pancakes. Maybe the owners are forming a new acronym. If that's the case, we're left to wonder what the B might stand for. International House of Breakfast? Might as well rename it International House of Boring. International House of Bacon? I'm a firm believer in the theory that bacon makes everything better, but I'm not sure I'd stake my entire restaurant chain on it. International House of Brie? International House of Broccoli? International House of Baba Ganoush? I just can't picture it. There's nothing wrong with the name IHOP. It's an I, which everyone loves, and a hop, a quick little jump. It has a lively ring to it. If IHOP wants to improve itself, it should do it the old-fashioned way. Better food and better service. That sort of advice would cost you millions if you hired a professional restaurant consultant, but I'm offering it to you today for free. All I ask is that if you do insist on changing the name, make it IHOB, International House of Brent. I'm Brent Batten. Be sure to read my columns on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays in the Naples Daily News. Check me out on Facebook, and as always, thanks for watching. 
Coming up, time to make the donuts. It takes hours and hours of work to make sure the doughy delights are fresh for you each morning. That's ahead on Behind the Headlines. The area's only 30 minutes or less ER service pledge means you'll find less waiting for the care you need. And because we're full service hospitals, a lot more care if you need it. Less waiting, faster care. Only at Physicians Regional Healthcare System. Hiring the right moving company is important. Best Moving and Storage is a family-owned and operated business serving Southwest Florida for over 22 years. From our free in-home estimate until the last piece of furniture is in your new place or stored in our climate-controlled warehouse, we treat you like family. Best Moving and Storage is fully licensed and insured with all of our employees being certified drivers and packers. When it comes to protecting your treasured belongings, choose a company that's experienced and trustworthy. Call Best Moving and Storage today at 239-592-6565. Is your auto insurance keeping pace with your life? Ask for a AAA Triple Check Insurance Review to see if your current policy is still a good fit. An agent will assess changes in your life, like new vehicles or drivers. Make sure you've got the right coverage and all the discounts you deserve. They'll also see how a AAA membership can round out your protection on the road. Plus, provide roadside assistance, discounts, free services, and vacation extras. Ask for your AAA Triple Check today. Donut lovers in Southwest Florida are waiting patiently, mouths watering, for one of the most popular chains to turn on their hot donut sign. The area's first Krispy Kreme is taking shape in Fort Myers, across from Page Field. As if to tease drivers on US 41, the walls are up and the iconic Krispy Kreme sign is taking shape. It's been a long time coming. The plan was to open a shop back in 2015, but the proposed site proved problematic. Donut lovers have been begging for Krispy Kreme to enter the marketplace at one point setting up a Facebook page to share their desire. And last December, word leaked out that Fort Myers was getting a franchise. Ground broke in February, owners tell the news press this location should open in October around Halloween. As mass-produced donuts go, Krispy Kreme is huge right now. Here's more from the USA Today. Krispy Kreme may have a crinkle in their plans for donut domination. Several small shops in Southwest Florida have spent years refining their tasty treats. At Trackside Donuts in Bonita, donut makers are burning the midnight oil to keep up with demand for hot, fresh, and local. While most of us are sleeping, a duo of donut makers are already working the dough. They get to Trackside Donuts in Bonita Springs between midnight and 1 a.m. each morning. And recently, daily news photographer Dorothy Edwards did the same. Watching them burn their midnight oil, the pair of bakers operate like clockwork, frying and frosting yeast-based treats. By the time morning arrives, they'll have a couple hundred donuts in various styles, ready for the picking. That's our show for this week. Thank you for making us part of your day. We're going to take this one out with some of our favorite food pics as shared to our social media. So feast your eyes on these.
remember, you can always catch up on past shows by logging on to naplesnews.com. On the homepage, scroll down to Quick Links and select Behind the Headlines. I'm Amy Osher. See you back here next week. You know, what this really comes out to for us is we love food. This is where it all started. We love food and, and we love finding good food. And there's no better way to share that thought and share those feelings than being fortunate enough to do something like restaurant making. Because you're sharing, we're sharing our favorite dishes with everyone else in the community. And we want people to say, hey, when I come here to Chatorio Bruso, that's what I want. Right. That's so good. I saw them eat it. Yep. And that's and that to us, that's really special. Yeah. Now, what area do you have? Either one of you all can answer. Um, what area, because you're adding all the time, do you want to conquer next? I mean, you've done San Marco, you've done the Cape Corals getting a food scene. I mean, what area? Well, since we started in Naples, Naples has always been the strongest base. We lived in Naples until this last year, and then I moved into Benita, Rafael moved into Fort Myers to be able to help our expansion. Um, I mean, what's left? Are you gonna try Cape, and get a LaBelle? Cape I mean, Coral's got an amazing food yeah. scene uh, that still needs a lot of highlighting. Sanibel has an absolutely crazy food Forgot scene, about them. in a good way, mm -hmm. and they need some highlighting. And then Marco has some absolutely fantastic restaurants as well. I never think of Marco. There's only three um, on Marco that's part of Restaurant Week right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, the wife and I went there last night to um, uh, Restaurante Da Vinci's. And there's so many more on Marco Island. So honestly, I think staying within Lee and Collier, mm -hmm. within the area, 239 area code, we have so much room to grow. And one thing, one thing that you asked us earlier was how, what happens if a restaurant wants to be part of it. And we always stick to the three P's, like we said, you know, the price point, the prestige, the presence. Based off that criteria alone, there's a little over 150, 200 restaurants that actually fit the mold of Restaurant Week. So it's not necessarily the area, because Restaurant Week's the best restaurants in all of Southwest Florida. Yeah. But it's conquering the best restaurants and getting them all to be a part of this and take in and getting the community to support what they're doing during yep. the events. Sure. And that is the most important, the community support, because you can have 100,000 restaurants on board, mm -hmm. as crazy as that would be. Mm -hmm. You can have 200 restaurants on board, but if the people and the community doesn't know about it uh -huh. and doesn't support it, then it's for nothing. Well, that's what I asked um, Tammy about. Something about that. Um, and that's, has yeah. there ever been to date a restaurant that you went after? <laughs> you thought you've got to be part of Restaurant Week? And well, actually, Every single one. The last <laughs> restaurant that we were at, Public House, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Hernandez and yep. his wife, uh, they had Hobnob and Public House, and we wanted them ever since they started. And it wasn't until this Restaurant Week in which they said, that it's become so big that they couldn't ignore it. So for us, that was a great pat on the back, um, but that was also an example of us growing and going, just sticking to and going after the restaurants that we know could benefit from it and that we would love to help.